Plus, the work isn't over yet for survivors of church sex abuse. And for a local teacher, a school day she will never forget. And in weather tonight, 70s, a record Saturday potentially. Then we go downhill. We'll talk about the weather that comes with this cool down next on Fox. From your breaking news and weather authority on Fox Rochester, this is 13 Wham News at 10. And some breaking news as we come on the air tonight. A stretch of 390 North between the Rush exit and Lehigh Station Road is shut down at this hour after a vehicle fire happened just last hour. Our crew reports it appears a car towing a trailer and a second car may have been involved. Both catching fire. We're waiting to get details from deputies and we'll pass them along as soon as we do know more. You still have the weekend to vote early in the 2022 midterms. More local voters are choosing that option this year. It was easy. Not everyone is available actually on election day. So it's great for, <laughs> great for people like me. Early voting continues Saturday and Sunday. Good evening, I'm Doug Emblidge. This is the first time early voting has been an option for a governor's race in New York. In Monroe County, the early voting tally is already three times last year's total. 13 WAM's Carla Rogner has more on early voting tonight, including what you need to know if you want to vote before Election Day. Doug, there will not be early voting on Monday as polling places prepare for Election Day on Tuesday. New York began early voting in 2019, and voters I spoke with tonight say they're grateful for the option. We came here to vote. Vote. Still days before the election, Jessica Boltz and her son Andrew can cross voting off their to-do list. I work at Strong as a nurse, so I'm going to be working all day on uh, Tuesday, and I'm not going to, after working all day, I'm not going to want to go out to vote, so it was nice to have the option to come here today. For them and others like Chloe Myers. Oh, it's so awesome. Having the flexibility when it comes to voting makes it easier to practice their civic duty. I won't be in town on the actual day of election, so I'm really glad that they had the availability to help people vote early. Monroe County Republican Board of Elections Commissioner Lisa Nicolay says this year about 25 percent of early voting ballots have been cast by Republicans, 20 percent by voters without a party and about half by Democrats. I think that Democrats prefer early voting and I think Republicans tend to be more traditional and, and have their routine for election days. More than 41,000 people have cast a ballot in Monroe County since early voting opened last Saturday. That's about 30,000 more than the early voting total in 2021, when about 13,000 people cast an early ballot. 2020 saw the most early voters, when more than 105,000 voters went to the polls before Election Day. Early voting has been kind of an up and down. In uh, 2020 for the presidential year, it was wildly popular. We had lines everywhere, um, so it was great. And last year it was very quiet and not a lot of people voted. And this year it's kind of in between. Um, every site that I visited and all the feedback we're getting is that it's been really steady and there's voters just coming in all the time. Registered voters in Monroe County can cast an early ballot at at any polling place. Nicolay says the only downside to it is you can't change your mind before Election Day. And we have a list of places to cast your ballot or check your voting status on our website. These votes will not be counted until Election Day, but the hope is with many casting a ballot early, lines might be a little shorter for Election Day on Tuesday. Doug? All right, Carla, thank you. Because Tuesday is the big day. Election security is a concern again this year, as it has been since the 2020 vote was called into question by Donald Trump and millions of his supporters. Poll worker safety is top of mind still after an increase of incidents of intimidation across the country, although it has not been a problem here so far. At this point, we haven't had anyone um, call us or, or notify us of any um, threats that have been made on them. And for ourselves personally as election commissioners, myself nor my counterpart or any of our staff at this point have ever had to um, worry and or uh, you know, deal with any of those type of situations. Again, we get all the answers Tuesday or maybe in the days to follow. 13 WAM News is your place for complete Election Day coverage, results, and live reports on 13 WAM News that night at 10 and 11. Former President Trump hinting that he will again run in 2024. Sources say that announcement could come the week of November 14th and will likely depend on how Republicans do in the midterms. 
Weekend weather is on the way, and uh, we're going to be in the mid-70s, near record warm temperatures here on uh, Saturday, Sunday, back in the upper 60s, with a bit of showers possible before noon. Here's a look at our highs today. Wow, we did good. Look at those numbers. Well into the 70s. Dansville hit 75. Just a beautiful weather day today. Here's a look at our live wham cam. No fog tonight. No worries there. We are at 64. The wind out of the south at 8. And the uh, visibility is way up there as well. In the northeast, the story is a lot of rain off to the west. We'll get a taste of some showers late tomorrow night in the Sunday morning. But really overnight tonight, it's just mild air. We're going to be in the upper 50s to maybe low 60s by tomorrow morning, thanks to those increase in cloud cover overnight. So Saturday, very warm. But how windy might it get? We'll have that answer coming up here, Doug, in just a couple minutes. All right, thank you, Scott. For hundreds of survivors of sexual abuse in the Catholic Diocese of Rochester, yesterday's $55 million settlement announcement was a big win. But as 13 WAMS Dalton Williams explains tonight, there is still important work to be done. The sexual abuse victims at a crucial point in their journey to justice. I think this whole experience has been like an honor I, I, it's really hard. I mean, when, when I was to be on the committee, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know the involvement that we had. I just knew that they were entrusting me for something. Carol Dupre says she was victimized by a priest in the 1960s. She serves on the Secured Creditors Committee, representing the victims in the bankruptcy proceedings for the diocese. Carol says she was happy to get the call telling her that they had just cleared a huge milestone, but adds that it doesn't feel real yet. My daughter texted me this morning and she said, has it hit you yet? And I said, no, it hasn't, because sometimes when you work for something for so long and then it's finally resolved, it takes a few days where you have your aha time. I, ha I haven't had the aha time because it just hasn't hit me. This new $55 million settlement marks the end of the litigation with the Diocese of Rochester and begins the litigation with the insurance companies for the diocese. We could be looking at two or three years worth of litigation. We're not sure. Um, you know, never know what turns litigation is going to take. But the but be assured that the clergy sexual abuse survivors and victims are not are not backing down. It's to get uh, affirmation from the insurance companies that they are going to contribute X amount of dollars to the uh, victims. For 13 WHAM News, I'm Dalton Williams. In a statement, Rochester Bishop Salvatore Matano said the agreement is the fairest approach and most viable path forward for the diocese. He also extended his deepest apology to the survivors of sexual abuse. Some neighbors in Russia are concerned about a recent spike in crime, specifically car thefts and car break-ins. As Cheyenne Walker learned today, they are not alone. Police say rural areas are now a favorite target of thieves. Ed Conklin has always known Rush to be a quiet and friendly community. It's one of the main reasons he and his wife moved to the area nearly 25 years ago. We moved out here in 98 and uh, because it's quiet and, and we love it out here. You're out, you're just outside of everything. You're in the country and it's quiet. However, overnight, their quiet was disrupted. This ring camera footage shows someone trying to break into their car. I came outside and he was gone. I don't, he took off going that way. There was a car parked around the street that I think was probably waiting for him. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office confirms that recent string of crimes, in most cases, the cars that were broken into or stolen were said to be unlocked. Just lock your vehicles, don't leave the keys in them, and keep them secured. Yeah, the rural areas tend to be more trusting. They think that they're uh, not gonna be having those concerns. Uh, unfortunately, nowadays, uh, the rural areas are the ones that are getting hit more often. Shine Walker, 13 Wham News at 10 on Fox Rochester. Rapper and entrepreneur Sean Diddy Combs is getting into the cannabis business and that will include an investment in Rochester. It's a $185 million deal. Combs is buying up parts of two cannabis companies, including Columbia Cares Dispensary on West Ridge Road. Columbia Care is being bought out by Cresco Labs, and as part of that acquisition, both companies have to divest, uh, divest some of their assets. So Combs Venture will become the largest black-owned business in the cannabis industry. 
Still ahead on Fox Rochester tonight, why DNC staffers were on strike, at least for today. And long waits in the emergency department. One man's story of trying to get care for his wife. Your Weather Authority Extended Forecast is brought to you by Lisa's Liquor Barn. It's the Sheep. Snowstars.com. It's happening earlier than usual. Rochester Regional Health reported 340 RSV cases in patients 18 and younger last week. That is five times more than the same time a year ago. And at URMC, they're reporting 193 patients under 18 with RSV last week, and that's more than three times the number they saw a year ago. We don't have the URMC numbers up there, but there they were. Hospitals in western New York continue to deal with a shortage of nurses and an influx of patients. Emergency rooms are sometimes overwhelmed. As Chase Howell reports, one man says his wife and many other patients waited hours in an ER before being seen. This cell phone video shows patients in hospital beds lining Strong's emergency departments. The hospital is overwhelmed. You know, it's you, uh, you can't even get in by ambulance. I mean, I can't even imagine if we walked in. Will says his wife was brought by an ambulance to Strong and waited for at least 15 minutes just to get inside the ED. Once they were in, Will says every hallway he went down 